Hey guys, Abby here, your fitness chick. Happy Monday, here to inspire, uplift, educate, and motivate you, just like I do every Monday night at 8 p.m. How was your weekend? How was your day? Mondays are always a great day for a fresh start, so hopefully you're off on a good foot. So today's topic, as I posted earlier today, is why the hell can't I stop eating? If you've ever had a problem with eating, I want you to comment in the message uh, below this video. If you feel like you've almost been on a bender <laughs> with food, it's like this domino effect that once you start eating something bad, it's like you can't stop. And a lot of that is going to be mind-blowing to you tonight. It's actually pretty disturbing and it really pretty much pisses me off that this kind of stuff is allowed by the FDA. So it's no secret that they're not always on our side and that you need to be proactive and educate yourself about what's going on with your body. So if you're having extreme challenges with losing weight, if you're consistently having problems with cravings, you feel like you're hungry all the time, then this is the segment for you. So I'm launching my brand new website. It's actually almost finally done. It's only a month behind, man. I'm too much of a perfectionist, but it's going to be launching within the next two weeks. And one of the courses that's going to be on there is going to be a lot more elaborate than what I'm covering tonight in my 20 minute segment. So obviously it's a lot of info to cram. So I'm going to have a whole course on cravings and hunger. And tonight I just wanted to touch on a, on a few of those things that are going to be included in the course. So I want you to stop for a second and I want you to think about this. When I, used, when I was growing up, I grew up in the 80s. I know you would never believe it. Uh, and back then, family, I feel, was a lot more prevalent. There was always family reunions. When anybody had a birthday, all the cousins, aunts, uncles showed up. If you guys did this, comment in the section. But I want you to think about the photos that you have from that time period in your life. How many people in those photos were overweight? Now I want you to reflect on a recent gathering of a mass amounts of your family. How many of those people are overweight? There's a difference. So what's going on that is creating this consistent weight increase? It's really obesity has become a major epidemic in the U.S., so the CDC, which is the Center for Disease Control, has said that the average American weighs approximately 25 pounds more today than they did in the 80s. Does anybody have any guesses why that is? If you do, comment in the section. Um, there's a lot of reasons behind it. First and foremost, people were more active back in the 80s. There were a lot more jobs that were physical labor, although that's still a big deal and still exists. There were a lot more jobs that were physical labor, so people were more active. Another reason why people were less obese back in the 80s is most of the time back then, both parents weren't working, so we didn't have dual income families, so there was one person working, and usually that was the, the husband, and the mom would make homemade meals. Because where I'm going with this and what I strongly feel is contributing Almost, I don't know, I want to say 80%. It's a high-ass number. To our obesity epidemic these days is processed food. We are a nation of convenience. We are a nation of, we want it, we want it yesterday. We are a nation that is super busy. We have lots of deadlines. We have lots of duties to accomplish in a day. And because of that, we're going to gravitate to things that are easy. And unfortunately, that includes fast food, take out, and processed food. So as much as 60% to 70% of the average adult and average child, which really pisses me off, is processed food. So what are we doing to our bodies and what are we creating? We're creating this pharmacy in our body that's working against us and is making us almost seem uncontrollable when it comes to eating. So I'm going to go over a few of those things real quickly, okay? 
So there's three responses when we're talking about hunger, real reasons why we're hungry. One is what's called societal response. Societal response is from this highly processed food that I'm going to spend more time on in just a second that is highly palatable, highly addictive, packed with all kinds of chemicals and makes us have this un- satisfied craving for them all the time. That's why when you start something with an M&M bag, it's usually not a good thing. So societal response. The other is psychological response to hunger. So we're triggered a lot of times by emotional eating. I'm a huge emotional eater. That's why I can't have any of that shit in my house <laughs> because if I have a bad phone call or I get a bad email or something stresses me out, I'm like, oh my God, where are the cookies? Because I want that calming effect. The third response to hunger is the psychological part. I'm sorry, the physiological part. And that's the brain-gut relationship. That's where we will talk more later about the vagus nerve and that pathway that they're communicating and sending all kinds of mixed messages to confuse our body into wanting more food. Okay? So to try to keep this layman's terms and not go into too much depth of it, but just so you guys can grasp the concept of why we're so hungry all the time, is a couple of things. First of all, the societal response. I don't know if you guys even realize this, but do you know that food manufacturers, the major food manufacturers that exist out there, I'm talking Kraft, Del Monte, you know, those types of manufacturers, the massive ones in the market, they actually hire engineers to manipulate the, uh, the way that the droplets of fat are conglomerated, the amount of fat to sugar to salt ratio. So they create this definition of something that's known as the bliss point in food. And that's where it's like, oh my God. Like if you've ever put something in your mouth, you're like, oh my God, I think I just died and went to heaven. That is so good. Like that's worth being fat over, <laughs> right? They're doing this purposefully to make us crave that feeling because in, essentially it's releasing these feel-good neurotransmitters in our body, dopamine and serotonin, to make us affiliate that food with this good feeling. So they actually hire engineers to manipulate the food so that we have these immense, immense cravings with them. They're laced with all these chemicals, MSG, gluten, things like that, that make some people even more sensitive to that craving. So when I talked about the psychological response to food, that's the emotional part, right? That's the part I said, oh my God, that's why I can't have cookies and stuff in my house because I'm triggered by emotional stuff. So let's stop and take a minute and reflect about that. Food is something very heavily tied to our emotions. Go, go back to when you were a baby, right? Or even just think if you have a young child now, a baby. When the baby cries, what do you do? Usually, I mean, you'll rock it. But the first go-to is to feed it, right? So immediately, food is introduced as a reward center in our brains for when we don't feel good, even as a baby, even as an infant. <clears throat> so we have that affiliation. As you were growing up, you became a toddler, you became a kid in high school, I don't know, or Grade school, I don't know about you, but if I went to the doctor, I went to the dentist, I had a good report card, food was what the reward was. Oh, you did good at the dentist today, Abby, we're going to take you to McDonald's, right? Or if you do good on your test, we'll go and get a blizzard. So food is a reward system. It sets off a reward system in our brain. The other thing in current times as adults Food is a huge reward because we look forward to food and alcohol as a reward system from a rough day. Think about celebrations. Every celebration in America, even stuff that's really not our celebrations, like fucking Cinco de Mayo, we're like, let's drink margaritas and eat nachos. Everything revolves around food and setting off those reward centers to release dopamine and serotonin. So when we're feeling emotional, when we're feeling stressed, when we're feeling depressed, we go back to what we were kind of always ingrained with, and that is food can help everything, right? If we eat something that makes us feel good and provides us with comfort, we're going to get that same reward system. 
So when we're feeling emotional, maybe you're feeling lonely and you're having that desire for social interaction, you're a double trouble because the midbrain, which is por the portion of our brain that helps to control our hunger, is also linked to social interaction. So it's a double whammy when you're depressed and lonely. You're going to eat. So when we eat sugary foods, which sugar is eight times more addictive, eight times more addictive than cocaine. When we eat foods that are high in sugar, which think about how much sugar, I mean, think about what you've eaten in the last week that had sugar in it a lot. Um, it's really easy to break down and really quick for your body to digest. And because it does it so rapidly, it majorly Fs, Fs up your hormones. And the main hormone that I'm talking about is something called ghrelin. Ghrelin is your hunger hormone. And so what that does is when you're eating, even if you're eating a lot of, like if you're at the movies and you have a, a regular soda and you have popcorn and you have M&Ms and you have whatever, you eat that not even thinking about what you're doing and really you don't start to feel too full because the sugar is being rapidly digested and then it shuts down your feelful hormone, which is leptin. So we're creating this just huge effect with all these foods that are creating this pharmacy in our body that is working against us and making us fight these terrible cravings and hunger. So you have to always stop and ask yourself, when my clients say, I'm hungry, which hardly of them ever do that because you eat so much on my programs. But if they say, hey, Abby, I'm hungry, I always right away mostly affiliate that they have an emotional response to food, which most of them do. I'll say, okay, so when you feel hungry, right now, would you go eat a bowl of vegetables? Are you that hungry? Like when you go, I'm hungry, go, would, I, would it, eat a bowl of vegetables make me happy? If you say no, you're really not hungry. The other part is go drink a glass of water. Because a lot of times when you think you're hungry, you're actually dehydrated. So go drink a glass of water. And then you have to go, hmm, am I really hungry or am I just thirsty or am I just bored? Or am I just fighting off the response from my earlier decisions of food in the day that has now created this craving effect in my body? So what can we do to really stop this process is we just have to recognize that food is mood. Food is mood. So if you are eating a bunch of garbage, I mean, think about this. When was the last time you went to a theme park? Florida, we have all kinds of them, you know. Um, what do we usually eat when we go to theme parks? A bunch of shit, right? What do you feel like <laughs> that day? Like you feel like shit, right? Because you're creating all this stuff in your body that's not serving you well. So, we have to just recognize and be aware of what we're doing. We don't want to be hungry all the time. So, what can you do? We want to we set off those good neurotransmitters so we get that feel-good feeling, but in a good, healthy way. So, how do you do that, Abby? So, as we wrap up, this is what you're going to do. So, to create that dopamine effect, we want to, create, to eat foods in the beginning of the day, because dopamine is um, similar to epinephrine, which is similar to adrenaline. So in the morning when we get up, we want to be alert. We want to have energy. We want to feel good. We want to get rocking and rolling without having to drink a pot of coffee, right? So we want to eat foods that are high in good amino acids that will stimulate the production of that neurotransmitter dopamine. So here's what is a great combination. Cottage cheese, anything that's high in protein, is going to help with that. So cottage cheese, a little bit of nuts, a little bit of fruit, that's stimulating a good dopamine production. It doesn't have a ton of carbohydrates. It's not gonna spike your ins insulin levels. It's gonna make you just have alertness. You're gonna feel great. And you're gonna fight not stimulating that sugar level. Because a lot of people, they'll get up, they'll drink a glass of juice. Have you guys ever looked at the back of a label of juice? How much freaking sugar is in that you might as well go eat a donut and there's not a whole lot of nutrition in it 
but a lot of people are starting their day off with high, 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 high amounts of um, insulin spiking, and it's creating all these cravings throughout the day. So breakfast, let's stimulate that dopamine. Let's do some cottage cheese with maybe some cherries, some walnuts, and you're set for the day. The other neurotransmitter that's going to help keep our cravings under control that we want to release is serotonin. And serotonin is actually derived from the amino acid known as tryptophan. We know tryptophan because it comes from Turkey when everybody goes into a coma from Thanksgiving dinner. It's from tryptophan. Serotonin is like that zen, feel good, chill, calm uh, neurotransmitter that makes us feel good. So we want to do this. And what time of day do you think that would be best? Nighttime. Nighttime. So if you're one of those people that has challenges with sleeping, I encourage you to try a little bit of this nutrition towards the end of the day before you go to bed to really release those high amounts of serotonin. So what foods are that, Abby, besides the turkey that I mentioned? Eggs are extremely high in tryptophan. Any kind of lean meat, fish, stuff like that, uh, paired with a complex carbohydrate because when you take a lean meat and you pair it with a complex carbohydrate, that's going to really make that musical harmony release of the serotonin. So the complex carbohydrates I'm talking about are quinoa, sweet potatoes, squash, things like that. So make your body work for you and not against you. And obviously this is a super quick segment on a very elaborate topic, but you have to really stop and ask yourself, if I'm hungry all the time, what am I doing? What am I doing to maybe help offset this? So keep a food journal. Keep a food journal. I had my client with one of my clients today, a phone call, and I said, you know, make a journal of how did you sleep the night before? What kind of, were you having cravings? And if you were, what were they for? What did you eat? What did you eat the night before? And then you can start going and doing the common denominator of what's contributing to your challenge because everybody's different. I have one client She's super sensitive to gluten. Gluten really doesn't affect me so much. I mean, it's not like the most wonderful thing because I know it can cause a lot of inflammation in the body. So it's not the best thing to look for. And if it's not in something, that's an added bonus. But, you know, maybe if you're having sensitivities, if you're having stomach troubles, if you're having cravings, eliminate gluten for a month and see how you feel. Make notation of that. So let's just start getting smarter. Let's start being more aware and start being more present of what we're putting in our mouth because food is mood. And with deliberate action, you, you can really recreate the way that you're living. If you want to wake up and have energy and feel good and not be like, oh my God, I'm just dying for a cookie all the time. Get, get out of that jail, you guys. You have the power to have control. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, you can always email me, um, support at yourfitnesscheck.com. You can private message me here on Facebook. You can leave a comment in this video. Um, and if you need help with getting started on your program, if you need a structurized program, I would be so happy to offer you a complimentary call. If you wanna hop on a call and just discuss what your goals are and what walls you're hitting, um, I'm happy to do that. You can check out my current programs right now at my current website, which is www.yourfitnesschick.com. Be on the lookout for the new launch uh, the next two weeks of my new website. And join me back here next Monday night, 8 p.m. for Monday Night Live. Next week, I'm going to be talking about reading food labels because you guys, the FDA, the supermarkets is not on your side. And so I'm going to educate you on how to make good decisions when you go to the grocery, make you a little bit more savvy on what's behind that can or that box or all that stuff you're putting in your cart, okay? So have a great week, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next Monday night.